Hello students, welcome to Make Pro channel, my official YouTube channel. Myself, Piraj Majinder, and I am continuing manufacturing processes. And we have moved to module 2, where we have completed back to back 9 lectures, where we have covered all the bulk metal and sheet metal forming operations. And today, we will be discussing on principles of powder metallurgy. So, let us start today's online session. Powder metallurgy is the name given to the process by which fine powdered materials are blended, pressed into a desired shape that is compacted and then heated that is sintered in a controlled atmosphere to bond the contacting surface of the particles and establish the desired properties. In reality, what happens? Uh, the powder metallurgy process involves that metal or alloy powders are compacted as you can see I have already discussed into desired shape after blending and then heated in a controlled atmosphere at a temperature below the melting point uh, in order to achieve the bonding of the particles to get the desired properties. Okay. Now the powder metallurgy process enables to produce parts in their final shape eliminating the need for any additional machining that is the versatility of this particular powder metallurgy process. And one more thing. Raw material is not wasted during the processing while unusual materials or mixtures can be utilized. It is uh, possible to get parts with uh, unique properties not possible by any other manufacturing process. And most of the powder metallurgy parts are in the size range of less than uh, 2 kg though parts as large as 20 kg can be made. So, you can see. Uh, it has a wide range of uh, you know the size uh, wide size range from 2 kg to 20 kg up to 20 kg you can produce out of this powder metallurgy uh, technique and uh, what happens in large pots uh, it requires uh, you know very expensive tooling such as uh, such and such you know that are not widely made by powder metallurgy so Generally, powder metal techniques are uh, mainly, uh, you know, restricted to uh, medium size or small size uh, products. You can say that's because uh, for producing large parts, expensive tooling is uh, need to be required. Okay, and also <coughs> one last thing I would like to share in the introduction part of the powder metallurgy that uh, though powder metallurgy was appeared to have been used by Egyptians around 3000 BC. The modern developments have started in the mid or late 19th century. The early interest was in the self lubricating bearings. So, self lubricated bearings was the uh, first you know you can say where the powder metallurgy uh, arrived. Okay. Later the invention of incandescent light required the filament to be made by powder metallurgy process. So, next was the filament of the incandescent lamp light uh, which is to be you know prepared by the powder metallurgy process. And the invention of uh, tungsten carbide in uh, 1920s utilized this particular powder metallurgy technique as well. And later on gradually the automobile industry has utilized the powder metallurgy to a greater extent and even today it accounts for a large volume of its usage as well. And many of the enhancements in uh, various powder metallurgy technologies have been taken place in the last 70 years as well. Okay. So, <coughs> next we have um, manufacturing look uh, what happens, I will just uh, give you a gist of the total processes uh, you know uh, being widely used in powder metallurgy te uh, technique. First. Uh, the metal or alloy powders need to be blended you know uh, with suitable additives and lubricants the thorough blending of powders and additives you know ensures that the um, additives are uniformly distributed which would facilitate the compaction process later after that uh, this blended powder is to be placed in the dye and then compressed or compacted by a punch using a punch and there are number of compacting methods are being widely used the compacting methods uh, generally are um, can be cold warm or hot compacting as well 
and in each of these varieties there are more processes that are possible such as dye compacting pressure less sintering isostatic extrusion injection molding rolling slip casting cold forming etc and uh, some of which uh, you know are well known to you as well as because we have already covered the extrusion process the molding process the rolling process the casting process as well so in forming you have a knowledge of this particular all these processes maximum of those processes okay now uh, this has the overall shape of the part uh, required but has not enough strength as a working part since the powders are not bonded together now to achieve this particular bonding the green compact is kept in a furnace with the requisite atmosphere and heated for a finite time and during this process uh, you know this particular process is known as uh, sintering actually and during this process the lubricants in the compact uh, gets evaporated while the bonding takes place and this is this whole process you know the heating process in the furnace of the you know this powder of the metals and alloys are known as sintering okay and after the sintering the powder metallurgy part can be optionally done with other manufacturing operations such as depressing coining sizing resintering forging rerolling or metal infiltration or finishing operations such as machining heat treating steam treating plating tumbling short pinning or impregnation so this is you know this is in short the uh, uh, gist of the total process uh, compiling this uh, powder metal technique now let us uh, read this reduction process and uh, powder metal technique what happens here metal oxides are turned to pure metal powder when exposed to below melting point gases result in a product of a cake of sponge metal the irregular sponge like particles are soft readily compressible and give compacts of good free center that is the you know free center means the green strength actually okay so it actually gives compacts of good uh, free center strength okay now uh, <coughs> it is used for uh, mainly iron copper tungsten molybdenum nickel and cobalt as well as you can see now manufacturing of powder now look uh, what is the first step in uh, powder uh, metallurgy actually uh, first step in the overall powder metallurgy uh, process is making metal powders and the final properties of a powder, powder metallurgy product uh, depend upon the properties of the metal or alloy powders that were used in its production actually and the important characteristics of uh, powders include the particle shape the size and the size distribution as well okay so there are number of uh, processes used for the manufacture of metal or alloy powders as well uh, such as you know uh, solid state uh, reduction i can write it for you and uh, you know these are the processes for the manufacture of metal or alloy powders so first is your you can say solid state reduction okay so that is the first step actually is one of the process uh, of producing the powder in powder metal that is the solid state reduction second is your atomization sorry for my handwriting as because i have to write with my bare hands this uh, screen of the phone so i am not getting actual hold of this particular uh, writing third is you can write as chemical process and there is also another one that is known as electrolysis we already heard the name of electrolysis so these are commonly the process used to manufacture the metal or alloy powders okay now uh, if i discuss about the uh, different process in short so you know atomization is also one of the process of making uh, manufacturing of the powder and solid state reduction uh, solid state reduction is very simple process this process is generally used to producing iron powder mainly for uh, you know with the help of solid state reduction we are mainly producing the iron powder and in this process selected metal or alloy is crushed mixed with iron uh, actually carbon and passed through a continuous furnace where the reaction takes place which leaves a cake of sponge metal 
this sponge metal is then crushed uh, after separating from all non metallic material then it is sieved to produce powder okay the purity of the powder is uh, dependent on the purity of the raw materials the powder particles are irregular and sponge like which can be readily compressed to be uh, good uh, you know uh, green strength okay now the next uh, process will be your uh, atomization as you can see over here atomization using a gas stream as you can see a spray is coming out of this particular uh, nozzle you can see the spray and the metal powder is over here in this uh, collection chamber actually okay so gas is being passed through this particular nozzle and this is the you know this is a siphon and molten metal as you can see over here it contains the molten metal okay so uh, this is the uh, you know typical diagram of atomization using a gas stream to produce metallic powder okay now what happens atomization from the word atomization you can easily guess that atomization breaks uh, molten metal into small droplets by rapidly freezing before the droplets come in contact with each other or with a solid surface okay actually the atomization is achieved by bringing the thin molten metal stream in contact with the impact of this one high energy jets of gas or liquid so they are mainly using air nitrogen and argon uh, uh, gases and water is uh, uh, the liquid most widely used so in atomization the particle shape is determined largely by the rate of solidification and varies uh, uh, from spherical um, if a low capacity gas is in, uh, employed to highly regular if water is employed okay and by varying the design and configuration of the jets pressure and volume of the atomization atomizing fluid actually the thickness of the stream of the metal etc it is possible to control the particle size distribution over a wide range now this um, technique is applicable to all metals uh, that can be melted and is used commercially for the production of iron copper alloy steels brass bronze aluminum tin lead zinc and cadmium so you can see it is uh, widely being used for most of the metals now it can also be used in selected instances for high melting point materials such as tungsten you can use also uh, titanium you can also use rhenium you can also use okay so here uh, you can see the liquid metal is coming uh, from this siphon um, uh, by the high velocity you know jet of uh, here you can see gas expanding through the nozzle the liquid metal uh, will be atomized here and spread into the collection chamber okay so that is the you know so molten metal is forced through a small orifice here you can see and uh, is distinguished by a jet of compressed air gas you can see uh, it is written as inert gas or water jet whatever you can use so it is used for low melting point materials brass bronze zinc tin aluminum lead etc and for also you can use for high melting point materials such as uh, tungsten um, and other such as titanium as well okay now the molten metal flows by uh, gravity into a thin stream which is immediately atomized by high pressure gas coming out from both sides thereby forming spherical particles which are then collected in the collection chamber as well okay so uh, here is the atomization process for producing the uh, you know this metal or alloy powders as well okay now um, next is your grinding so grinding you already know how to produce the metallic powder out of the grinding the metallic powder is nothing but the unburnt tiny chips formed during the process of grinding now comminution is a granular material which may be coarsely atomized powder is fed into a stream of gas under pressure through a venturi and is collected and thereby impeded by the adiabatic expansion of the gas before inging impinging on a target on which the granules shatters this process is used for production of very fine powders such as are required for injection molding purpose as well okay so now brittle materials such as inner metallic compounds ferro alloys ferro chromium ferro silicon are produced from this combination next is your electrolytic deposition or electrolysis you can also say uh, the desired metal is made as uh, uh, anode in an electrolytic cell such as that it is uh, dissolved by the electrolyte in the cell and uh, 
transported and uh, deposited on the cathode in a spongy or powdery form. The deposit is removed, washed and dried to get a metal powder. Copper is the primary metal produced by electrolysis, but iron, chromium, magnesium powders are also produced as in this process. As you can see here, it is written clearly that it is generally used for iron, copper and silver as well. And mainly copper is uh, mainly uh, is the primary metal as you can see from uh, produced from electrolysis. Okay. And it is also similar to electroplating uh, process as well. And for making copper, copper powder, uh, copper plates are placed as uh, anode as I earlier told you the desired material or metals to be placed as anode in the tank of electrolyte whereas the aluminium plates are placed in the electrolyte to act as a cathode. And DC current is being passed, the copper gets deposited on the cathode. The cathode plates are taken out and powder is cracked off. The powder is washed, dried and pulverized to the desired grain size. Now this cost of manufacturing is high in case of this particular operation. Next uh, there are also some uh, uh, more uh, you know process for manufacturing of powder granulations as metals are cooled they start rapidly producing the powder. Machining you know coarse powders such as magnesium can be produced out of this machining process. Milling crushers and rollers to break down metals used for brittle materials. Shooting drops of molten metals are dropped into water used for low melting point materials. Condensation metals are boiled to produce metal vapors and then condensed to obtain metal powders. Uh, and it is generally used for zinc, magnesium, cadmium, etc. Next, let us discuss some characteristics of metal powder fineness. It refers to uh, particle size of powder. You know, from the name, you can easily guess fineness. Okay and it is done either by pouring the powder through a sheaf or by microscopic testing and a standard sips with uh, mesh size uh, varies between 100 and 325 and used to determine particle size and particle size distributions, distributions of powder in a certain range as well now particle size distribution refers to amount of each particle size in the powder and have a great effect in determining flowability uh, apparent density and final porosity of the product now this is the diagram uh, involving all the steps actually required in powder metallurgy so here you can see elemental or alloy metal powders over here and here is the lubricants or bound binders that are being used for producing fine powders or you can say as well as the additives after that you have to produce the blending then you have to from the die compacting operation then sintering that is the heating operation and in this you have optional secondary manufacturing optional secondary finishing as well and after that you will be getting fin finished final automatic product okay so uh, this is also a schematic diagram of different operation things performed in a powder metallurgy as you can see this powder binding and lubricants then mixing then pressing it okay then disintering in a furnace where heat is being uh, produced and employed to the powder compacted powder actually then uh, repressing you can perform repressing or machining you can perform tumbling is also there joining is also there impregnation is also there these are the secondary operations they are all optional as well next uh, you have to produce the final part of the out of the uh, powder metallurgy okay so Next, it has discussed about blending. So, blending, you know, this is the mixing operation and it can be done either dry or wet as well. Okay. And lubricants such as graphite, uh, steric acid improve the flow characteristics and compressibility at the expense of reduced strength. Binders produce the reverse effect of lubricants. Okay. Thermoplastics or a uh, water soluble methyl cellulose bounder is used most lubricants or binders are not wanted in the final product and are removed next is compacting compacting you can easily uh, guess uh, last one more thing i would like to share with you in blending that uh, <coughs> what happens Blending refers to the mi mixture you already know of the same metal or alloy powders or different size uh, distribution to reduce the porosity levels in the uh, powder metallurgy product as well. Okay. Now, the powders are also mixed with additives to help 
the allowing process as well as lubrication. And the main function of the lubricant is to reduce the friction between the powder and the die walls, core rods, etc., where the powder slides during the compaction process. This ensures the desired uniformity of density from top to bottom of the compact. The lubricant also helps in reducing the friction uh, for easy ejection of the compact and minimizes the tendency to form cracks as well. Now, popular lubricants are, as I earlier told you, are graphite, steric acid, sterine, metallic steroids, that is, zinc steroid, and increasingly other organic compounds of a waxy nature. Okay. And blending and mixing, I can uh, say they are normally done by using um, mechanical processes. Okay. So, next uh, we have the compacting. It is uh, Powder is pressed into a green compact, okay, and the pressure generally 40 to 1650 MPa, depends on materials as well as uh, product uh, complexity. Still very porous, 70% uh, density you can see over here, maybe done colder warm, that is higher density on oh, it is warm, okay. So actually what happens in compacting, loose powder is compressed into a shape known as green compact, which is very important step in powder method. The desired characteristics to be achieved by compacting are, are high product density and uniformity of that density throughout the compact. Okay. Now, compacting is generally accomplished by the use of mechanical presses and rigid tools, but hydraulic presses are also being used. Compaction pressures are generally, as you can see, um, range from 40 to 1650 MPa. Maximum capacity for the powder metallurgy press may be of the order of ma 1 mega Newton or less. Okay. So, these are the things you need to know about the compacting process. You need not have to go in much deeper for this particular compacting process. So, this is all. Next, we move on to the diagram for uh, you know this compacting process as you can see over here. Uh, it is being very clearly illustrated. This is the punch and this is the lower punch as well. Now, this is the die and this is the portion where the powder is being placed. Now, pressing the upper die against the lower die, here the green compact is produced out of this compacting process. Next part, you have to separate the upper die in order to eject the, uh, you know, the green strength that is the compacted powder. So, you can see over here. So, this is the different steps involved in compacting process. Next is your sintering process. This is very important and one of the most, uh, you know, widely famous, you know, uh, step in uh, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, powder metallurgy uh, process. Okay. So, sintering, what is sintering? As, you, as I earlier told you that sintering is the uh, uh, it is a heating of the green compact after after compacting that is after making the green compact uh, sintering is the next step where it refers to the heating of the green compact in an oven okay and the heat is supposed to join the various grains that is the metal powder into a single mass and thus developing the necessary strength as well uh, and that strength obtained in the process depends on the temperature and the time the powder compact is supposed to be in the oven as well okay and the traditional furnace found in the powder metallurgy industry is a mesh belt furnace. So, I can write it for you. It is mesh. <coughs> so, furnace for uh, sintering is a mesh belt. Furnace. Okay, so mesh belt furnace with three operating zone actually. Uh, first is the preheat or delab zone where the lubricants or binders are burnt off. Uh, sintering zone where the necessary strength develops, and a cooling zone. So three steps, uh, three operating zones of a uh, uh, mesh belt are uh, preheat, sintering, and cooling zone as well. Okay, so generally the temperature of a particular uh, this uh, you know unique typical. Uh, Mesh belt furnace uh, that is from uh, ranges from actually 1100 to 1200 degrees Celsius for ferrous parts, and it is around 800 to so I can write it for 1100 to 
1200 for ferrous and it is uh, 800 to 850 degree celsius these are also in celsius for this these are for alloys of coppers and these are for ferrous mixtures as well okay and the strength achieved by the sintering process mainly depends on the sintering temperature as well okay and so the trip actually this uh, total process in sintering process generally uh, takes part around two to three hours depending on the size of the part as well okay. now some component components are sintered at a temperature of 150 degrees celsius or higher a process called uh, you know this uh, high temperature sintering and effort actually 1500 degree celsius or higher not 150 degree celsius and uh, this is known as a high uh, temperature sintering and effort made to enhance the mechanical properties and another variation of this process is called as a sinter hardening it is accomplished by uh, using a controlled cooling rate in the cooling section of the belt furnace transforming the steel matrix of the ferrous part to martensite as you earlier know from uh, your material science classes that the hardest part is uh, martin site okay so that is done by the help of this sintering process as well okay so uh, next we have cold isostatic pressing these are actually the secondary operations uh, actually what happens as uh, some optional secondary operations are performed on sintered part to achieve the final dimension and properties of the part so generally repressing repressing is performed on powder metallurgy components to increase the density and to improve the mechanical properties as well during repressing uh, what happens the density of the part is generally increased especially if the as sintered density is low in certain cases where strength and other mechanical properties are required to be at maximum repressing is used principally to achieve such densification and further improvement is achieved by re sintering okay next uh, cold isostatic pressing you can see over here the powder is contained in a flexible mold made of rubber or some elastomer material the flexible mold is then pressurized by means of high pressure water or oil same pressure in all directions and no lubricant is generally needed in this uh, cold isostatic pressing high and uniform density can be achieved from this particular uh, cold isostatic pressing so here you can see the process the diagram of cold isostatic pressing here you can see this is stopper here fluid is given over here here is the fluid and the pressure is applied from here so pressure acting on the mold you can see over here these are the pressures uh, acting are given by the shown by the arrow and this is the flexible mold and inside here is the powder so here you can see cold isostatic pressing okay now hot isostatic pressing is uh, carried out at high temperature and pressure using a gas such as iron argon and the flexible mold is made of sheet metal due to high temperature compaction and sintering are completed uh, simultaneously uh, used in the production of billets of super alloys super uh, high speed steels uh, titanium ceramics etc where the integrity of the material is a prime consideration so here is the diagram for a uh, horse isostatic pressing as you can see is the hot portion so this is the pressurized uh, gas iron this is the pressed part as you can see a steel can contain it. and this is the heat chamber this is the heat chamber and pressure is being applied to the mold inside the uh, outside of the pressure uh, yeah, this powder is contained inside the mold you can see over here so this is the hot isostatic pressure now powder rolling uh, is another you know uh, operation where uh, powder is being passed through a feeder you can see over here and it is being pressed by the help of the two rolling uh, mills uh, rotating at uh, opposite direction to each other then it is being uh, uh, you know directed towards the furnace okay so here you can see pressed powder strip coming out of this particular uh, feeder so this is the powder ring. so repressing i already told you it is a perform to increase the density and improve the mechanical properties and further improvement is achieved by re-sintering and pre-sintering is if a part you know is made by powder metallurgy this is the powder metal written over here this is this need some machining it will be rather very difficult if the material is very hard and strong these machining operations are made easier by the pre-sintering operation which is done before sintering operation okay now features of uh, powder metallurgy products uh, so as we have completed our different uh, 
or uh, you, you know the steps involved in a powder metallurgy so we can now have a look on the particular these features it contains uh, for high tolerance parts the centering part is put back into a die and repressed in general this makes the part more accurate with a better surface finish a part has many voids that can be impregnated one method is to use an oil bath another method is vacuum first then impregnation a part surface can be infiltrated with a low melting point metal to increase density strength hardness ductility and impact resistance as well next uh, plating heat treating and machining operations can also be used uh, inflate infiltration is a component is dipped in a low melting temperature alloy liquid the liquid would uh, flow into the void simply by capillary action thereby decreasing the porosity and improving the strength of the component the process is used quite extensively with ferrous parts using copper as an infiltrate but to avoid erosion and alloy of copper containing iron and manganese is often used next is impregnation impregnation is similar to infiltration as you can see from the name itself and here particle metallurgy component is kept in an oil bath the oil penetrates into the voids by capillary forces and remains there the oil is used for lubrication of the component when necessary during the actual service conditions the oil is uh, released slowly to provide necessary lubrication the components can absorb uh, between 12% and 30% oil by volume this is being used on uh, powder metal self lubricating bearing components since the late uh, 1920s now here you can see the products uh, oil pigmented porous bronze bearings as you can see over here very nice products now the advantages coming to the advantages the you know uh, this powder metal uh, can be produced to the neat neat shape required very little finishing operation so it is a highly uh, finishing operation you can say also for a higher dimensional accuracy coining or sizing operations can also be used uh, it is possible to achieve a service finish between 0.8 to 0.1.2 uh, micron actually from a die with a surface finish of the order of 0.5 to 0.8 microns okay now wastage is almost negligible in this case uh, this portal metal case okay and reasonably complex shapes can also be produced and also combination of materials you know it is in, it is possible to produce parts with combination of materials that is not possible by any other process for example metals and ceramics can intimately mix with each other okay now automation of the this particular pm process that is powder um, metallurgy process can be easily accomplished uh, reducing the labor requirements and increasing the quality as well now certain metals are there that cannot be manufactured by the other process can be done by easily by powder metallurgy process okay and for example you can take uh, that of uh, tungsten and tungsten carbide okay and it also provides controlled porosity uh, you know for uh, self lubrication by infiltration of lubricating oils as well okay so um, again uh, good tolerances and surface finish that i earlier told you highly complex shapes can produce porous uh, for example cemented oxides and pores in the metal can be filled with other materials and metals surface can have higher high wear resistance uh, porosity can be controlled as well low waste automation is very easy so these are the advantages physical properties can also be controlled variation from part to part is low hard to machine metals can also be used no molten metals no need for any finishing operation as because we are getting highly surface finished uh, materials permits high volume production of complex shapes allows non traditional alloy combinations good control of fine density as well now coming to the limitations or disadvantages as you can see every process has got its certain limitations the tooling cost is generally high here okay and uh, therefore can only be justified for mass production okay raw material cost is also very high uh, however however it can be justified because most of the materials is utilized without any oil stage during the processing so next you can say because of the presence of residual porosity as well the mechanical properties are inferior compared to the corresponding cast or machine part and with complex part geometries the flow of metal powder into deep cavities and corners is a problem as well and as a result there will be a variation in the density in the part uh, at different locations which translates into different properties as well okay. so here you can see metal powders degrade quickly when stored improperly fixed and setup costs are high part size is limited by the phase and compression of the proper powder used sharp corners or varying thickness can be hard to produce 
non moldable uh, features are impossible to be sustained okay. now applications coming to the application part oil impregnated bearings made from either iron or uh, copper alloys are for uh, generally for you know this home appliance and automotive uh, applications as well now pm means uh, powder metallurgy filters can be made with the you know this particular pores of almost uh, any size as you can see over here and the pressure or flow regulators can also be made out of this uh, powder metallurgy technique small gear stamps etc can also be produced after this powder metallurgy techniques products which where the combined properties of two or more metals or both metals and non metals are desired can be produced by this particular powder metallurgy technique cemented turbines are widely being produced by this particular process uh, by the cold compaction compaction of the tungsten carbide powder in a binder such as cobalt uh, mainly this uh, cobalt is the binding uh, main binding material in uh, tungsten carbide and is followed by a liquid phase center okay so uh, today we have discussed thoroughly the different aspects of powder metallurgy along with its advantages and limitations and applications as well hope you have enjoyed today's class thank you for watching